Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be doing a little demonstration here with the Butt Buddy. I'm gonna see how it is. I've seen videos on it and stuff like that from the manufacturers and I've kind of wondered about it myself and then someone actually reached out to me and asked me, uh, would I be interested in doing a review on it? So I was like, sure, because like I said, the guy that does the videos and stuff like that, he surely makes it look like a wonderful tool. Like it'll just, it just looks like it'll work great. So I was really glad to get my hands on it and try it for myself. So uh, I'm gonna do a few cuts here with it, maybe cross seams and head seams. Uh, see how it works out and see if it actually works as good as they say they do. So hang on just a second. I'm gonna pass this off to my cameraman and then we're gonna get, uh, get to making some cuts and stuff here. Thank you guys for tuning in, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys don't know what a butt buddy is, it is this thing right here. It's supposed to be uh, for cutting seams and stuff like that. Let me, here you go. I'm gonna pass that off there. Okay. So this is it. Uh, you can see what it says right here. Pro Stretch Butt Buddy Universal uh, Carpet Top Cutter. So you're supposed to be able to cut from the top of your carpet and make seams and stuff like that. And it's supposed to run, see here, it has adjustments, plates and stuff like that. So these things right here, if you loosen these, actually it don't loosen, it will turn and as you turn it, this will ever so slightly move this plate out to get right in your rows of your carpet to help it slide down through the rows just straight. So all the way closed was perfect for the carpet that I'm working with here. And I even, okay, so let's, the blade, the blade right here, it goes up, let's see here. So it came with this piece right here. The little washer that went on it is actually kind of stuck out on one side. As you can see it don't, well, try to get my pouch out, I mean my ink pen out there so I can point. So as you can see, there's a little gap in between the blade and stuff right here. So this far side, the side of this washer that's closest to this plate is actually got a little uh, mound on it or whatever you call it there. And this side is flat. It came with this side against that and I was having issues with the blade slipping back up into the cutter as I was trying to make my cuts. So I turned it around. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way or what, but anyway, I turned it around and it gets a better bite on the blade right now, so it hopes. So what you do, you turn that uh, wing nut right there a couple of times. It's actually really easy to slide that blade up there and tighten it back down. It's actually really easy to do that. You do have to get this thing tightened down pretty good. Like I said, I was having issues getting the blade, getting the blade to stick in there before, as I was making my cuts. So it sticks out the bottom right there. Again, this plate will adjust and widen and close it up there to get uh, perfectly in the rows. This piece, uh, this plate right here is actually tapered down a little bit. I'm gonna show you this right here. Are you able to see right there's a little shiny spot on the edge of that. This piece of metal is actually tapered down a little bit. So it's not as thick as the whole plate. It comes down to a pretty nice point like a regular row finder. So, uh, makes it sl it actually slides real nice but i tell you what uh i was having issues with it uh staying in the row never never got it to completely stay in the row perfectly uh let's come right over here i even took i even took in row run i give this thing all the benefit that i possibly could the design of this is super awesome i really like the design of it the handle is leaned over and stuff like that because it actually sets at an angle. So they put the handle on it leaned over so that it sets up nicely. It feels real good to use. Uh, I just wasn't happy with the results. I even took and I row run one side and tried it out. I row run both sides to where both of these would be in the row and cut and I still could not get it right. So we're gonna make a cut right here and see without row running that's as the gentleman does on the video and we're going to see how it works well and that's what i was talking about about the blade not wanting to stick out there really well it just keeps going up in there every time i get a cut i have to really really bow down on that to get it to stick out it keeps as soon as it hits the carpet it's cool on the pad but as soon as it hits the carpet it just gets pushed back up in there we'll give it another try here See that? That just goes right back up in there. I'm gonna have an issue right here. 
trying to get this big crazy thing to stick up, stick out. And I'm getting it as tight as I possibly can. I don't know why that does it. Like I said, I even flipped over the washer. As soon as it hits the back end of the carpet, it goes, it gets pushed right up in there. I'm squeezing a fire out of that too. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit. Maybe it'll work. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to come outside and get some pliers. I guess that is just not working real good right there. <coughs> Sorry about that. I would have, I would have had this stuff ready. I thought I had it ready because I thought I had it figured out how the blade would actually uh, stick out there, but it's just not working right fast. Let me grab some pliers. been a really awful day so far, all the rain and stuff, but it's sun's shining now, so it's starting to feel better. Anybody asking any questions or anything? Not yet. Okay. I'm getting this thing super tight. I sure ain't saying a whole lot for it, honestly. Bow up on it with some pliers and see if that works. it up the gentleman that sent it to me uh, sent me a package to send it back I have got that so tight I'm bending the little plastic thing right there so I'm going to stop if it don't work it's definitely a fail I don't know what's up with that I'll try turning it around again and see let's see here I made all these cuts with it all, this whole stack of carpet is all piles and piles or pieces and pieces of that I just made a whole bunch of cuts with it trying to get it right And it just ain't doing it, man. I don't know what's up with this. Well. I'm going to try to turn this around. Put the washer back on it the other way. Look at here. So this is what I... This is why I turned it around originally. So this bottom piece, this kind of flares out right there. See how this is tapered up? So I put this piece out to it so it would tighten down on it better versus the flat piece and it's still doing the same thing again i'm going to put the flat piece back on it like it came and we'll see how that does and this is a brand new blade one of my gorilla blades that i put on it myself because i didn't have any luck with what blade came on it i didn't know if it was uh the blade's fault that was going up in there or not but the blade that they sent was doing the same thing it actually looked like a gorilla blade too that had the same color and stuff of the as the gorilla blade. Let's hope this thing will go, man. I, if it don't, I'll just tell you what I think about it if I can't even get it to work. I'll just tell you about it rather than show you. I was gonna show you, but it just makes a lot more sense to show somebody. Okay, so that is super tight. That should definitely work. Like I said, I got it this tight so I don't uh, break that thing in there. I'm afraid to go any further. I don't want to break it. Okay, that actually cut it right there. So that, you can see what happens right there. Um, you definitely lose fibers. You see all them fluff off of there like that? I'll do another cut there. You can see dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light. So it it didn't actually feel like it stayed in a row that time. That's the that's the first time I've done it, and all of these cuts, it was the first time I was able to get it to stay in a row. However, I did lose a whole bunch of fibers. Let's look at this right here, really close. So this is a problem right here, okay? You got a whole bunch whole bunch of cut fibers on these there's a cut fiber and that's what was falling off of it that's a cut fiber cut fiber cut fiber just all the way down through there there's a couple two or three right there another one and that is not going to make a good seam whatsoever okay so I'm like I said I was going to give this thing the benefit of the doubt I'm going to 
row, row run. I'm gonna find a row in it and attempt to make a cut like that. There is one, one plus about this, I guess. We'll take a look at it in just a second. What knee pads are those? These are the Pro Knees 0714, and they are absolutely the best knee pads on the planet. That's not an exaggeration, on the planet. These knee pads will, when you purchase these, I'll leave a link to all this stuff in the description uh, after the video is done, so you can uh, click on it and just go right to it. These will actually be tailor fitted to your personal self there. When you order them, you have to fill out the size chart You'll measure your legs here, here, and then from your knee down, and they will make these specifically to fit your leg. So as long as you give them the right measurements, you're going to have some perfectly fitting knee pads there. Why do they need to be strapped to the bottom of the leg? Uh, they're just so big. I mean, if they wasn't, so look here how they're made. See how this is comes around here like this? I mean, look, if I didn't, that would just be flopping all around like that. One strap is not going to hold these on there good enough. Uh, this right here, that pad that comes around there, is not just to support that buckle right there. That actually helps you if you roll over to the side of your foot. It supports your ankle. You don't have any problems getting on the side of your ankles or uh, your knee right here. So if you notice, these are made in just a little arch like that versus straight up and down. They're made like that. This right here point is the center of your shin. So when you sit on that, it distributes all of your weight right to the center of your solid bone versus being up here on your actual knee or setting down on your foot. This is thick enough right here. These are the uh, one inch pads. You can get them half inch or one inch, but I chose the one inch to keep me up off of my feet and off of my knees. So whenever I sit down like that, see here, all my weight, see that right there? That's a pivot point right there, right where it uh, V's out like that. All my weight is actually setting on this thick pad right there versus the top of my feet or my knees. The way it puts you at an angle like that because I'm on this flat part here, my knees have no pressure on them whatsoever right there. So uh, if I didn't have these on, I would be leaning forward more like that. Again, that just jacks you up to keep you off your knees. So they're super awesome, man. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. If you're gonna be in it for a long time in flooring and uh, you're halfway young. It don't matter if you're halfway young or not. Get you some of these if you plan on being in the flooring industry for a long time because these will definitely save you. I've been wearing them for a couple years now and I wish I had it started 20 years ago. You won't find no better ones, I guarantee you that. Someone said they're 250 pounds, the nub. $250, you're exactly right. It's what they cost here in the States. 200 and, yeah, 249 so yeah, $250 is what they cost. But everything on these are replaceable. If you buy these, you only have to buy them one time for the rest of your life, okay? If something wears out on them, every one of these parts are uh, replaceable. You do not never have to buy a complete knee pad again. So that $250 is a one-time purchase for the rest of your life. Again, every single thing on here, the buckles, the fiber, this white part, the pads, everything, whenever they get broke down, you can buy more. These are two years old, and look at them. I still got years and years on these right here. There ain't a single single thing wrong with them thus far. They're actually still in perfect shape, and I wear them always. I don't wear them just on solid floor. I wear them always. Every time I'm on the floor, I wear these, and they've had two years of abuse, and nothing wrong with them. I probably got... Uh, three or four more years before I even have to replace anything on them. So you're looking at five years at the minimum for 250 bucks. I was wearing those other, just like he's got on right there. Let me see that camera and I'm gonna point those out. I was wearing these for a long time. You can see in some of my, uh, see in some of my earlier videos, I was wearing those for a long time. And you have to buy them every, every three or four, five months or something like that. You're gonna to have to buy a new pair just because they get a hole wore out in them or they're gonna just break down or the elastic's just gonna get stretched out so much. What happens is the elastic part on the bottom, for me, uh, would get just totally demolished because that's where you're at on them all the time. So, uh, and those are 60 bucks. So uh, 60 times four, you could do that and boom, there's your set of knee pads. And that's two years right there uh, buying knee pads. If you have to buy a pair every six months, it's 240 bucks. 
and how many for a new pair versus 250 bucks for one pair and I still got years to go on them. So now they're already paid for themselves. Now everything else is a plus. They paid for themselves and by all means in the healing that my body has been able to do from not being on the parts of my body that wears out, it gives them a break. Now they're actually able to get better from the abuse that I have given them over the years. The top of my feet were awful. The nub said uh, lots of knee pads give you varicose veins. These knee pads do or lots of Lots them? of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have them. So I don't know if that might be something that runs in people's jeans and stuff. Do they mark up vinyl plank when you're crawling on it? No, I wear, I wear them on everything. Whenever uh, I first got them, it was scary. The way these screws and stuff like that are, I was asking questions and I was really skeptical about these, but because I do a lot of hardwood and I crawl around on hardwood all the time, I've never had an issue with these. Uh, I gotta be certain about that because I feel like maybe one time I did because I got over on it in a weird position or something, or maybe I was on the edge of a board, I think is what it was. I can't remember. I think I've had one one damaged board. I don't know what part of this done it, but I think I've had one scratch on a board from these knee pads in two years, but I can't remember the exact situation, position I was in or anything like that, but they are, they don't, I mean, they're worth it no matter what, no matter what, they're the best on the planet. Okay, so back to the butt buddy. I got that row run right there now. I wanna go ahead and make this cut and see how it does there. You pretty much, the way this thing is, you pretty much have to guide it in there and don't just follow the run. I'll just do it right here. So I'm off my row right there. I can already see it. They said that this thing will just run right down the row. It absolutely does not. Well, look at there. It may have just uh, looked like it, but it absolutely did stay in the row. And I actually got, a, well, right there's a cut fiber. Uh, I actually feel like I got a decent cut that time. It looks like it anyway. All right, cool. So that one did a good cut. There's a couple of cut fibers right there. There's another one there, so. Uh, I'm gonna shut that door. Make a lot of racket. I got a big bay door out here. The wind is blowing. I'm gonna make another cut on that. I don't want to discard this thing. I want to give you guys the best information I can on this. And again, that one didn't turn out too awful bad. So I'm going to do it again there and just see it again. That's probably the best cut I did out of all of these right here. So the, th the problem I was having, I had to literally hold it in my row. It got off there again. Uh, this would be my cut piece here. It's just cutting fibers. Cutting fibers. See all them loose ones there? That ain't no good. And uh, there's some cut ones, there's some cut ones, there's some cut ones. There are cut ones here, here. Yeah, so even, even running the row, again, it feels real good to use it. It's comfortable and everything. There's just cut fibers all down through here. It looks good from the pattern of this. Uh, like I said, the dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light. That's what you want, but you do not want cut fibers. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to row cut it again. Uh, I'll run another row in it and we're going to, we're going to keep doing this. That way I give it a fair, uh, fair review here. I'm not, I don't want to be biased whatsoever. I'm by no means partial to it or not partial to it. I'm just trying to give you guys an honest review on this. I actually was hoping it would do good. Okay. That one felt good. Again, I got loose fibers falling off of it, so that is not good. Anytime you got loose fibers falling off of your cut, it's not good. I will do one with a regular row cutter just to show you guys you should not have any fibers falling off of it. And the reason you got fibers falling off of it is because of cut fibers here, here, uh, here, here here and it's just not staying dead in the row like you want 
it might be something that requires a lot of practice or something, but I mean, I've done, there's more cut ones. Yeah, well, they're just loose ones there, not cut, just straight up falling out. But I mean, I've done a ton. I can usually, even if I switch something, a tool or something, uh, almost 30 years have been in the floor and I've got, I can usually get a grasp of something within just a couple of cuts. I can feel out, feel how it does and stuff, so. I've done a bunch of cuts with this. To try my best to make it work. Again, that's just a bunch of loose fibers. A bunch of loose fibers, again, just falling off the edge of that thing, which is not good. And they're just cut, cut, cut. Somebody said a straight edge from the back would do better than that thing. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I thought, uh, this thing was not following a row, and it's not again. So that's what this is here for. I thought, well, oh, well I'll show you that on a head soon. So I'm gonna get a row cutter right here. And I'll just show you that you should not have any fibers falling off of your cut whenever you make a row cut. That's the whole purpose of making a row cut. So you can cut directly in the row and not even cut the fibers. That's how you get a good seam. You want to cut the backing only. So if you cut your fibers, it's not, it's not good. And I'll show you right here. That kind of feels funny since I was using that big thing, jumping back to this. So looky here. This is what you should have right here. Ah, look at that, I actually got a cut one right there. And right there. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, but, well, I got, I actually got a couple cut ones. You can tell I've been out of practice there, huh? I don't do a whole lot of carpet ink these days. I'm gonna do that again, just to be fair with that. I've done it a ton with that. I should, anyway, be a, be a lot better with that. I've done thousands of carpet scenes in my life. Still got a cut one right there. Mm, right here, I got a little bit of a cut one too. So those are not good. I would not want to seem that I would have to keep cutting that until I got it right. Kind of embarrassed to be honest with you. <laughs> Should be able to do better than that. Anyway, let's uh, let's try to do a head seam in that cutter right there, the butt buddy, and. Honestly, that thing did not do too bad. There's only one thing I've seen against that. It actually made it cut good, and it did not cut the fibers, uh, cutting the way it laid down there. So my carpet is laying down that way. Now watch this. This thing actually does good on this, about pushing the fibers out of the way so you don't cut them, okay? There's only one thing I've seen about this, and I'll show you in just a second. Are those butt seams? This is going to be a butt seam right here, yes. So you see that? Now watch this. This is actually good. Looky here. Just a little bit, but you can't control that on a on cut seam, uh, head seam or butt seam, whatever you guys want to call it. So I still got really good fibers here. It actually pushes them out of the way. If I was to butt that up against another one there, I'll butt it right up to that same piece and just show you. Uh, it'll go right back together good. So I was kind of impressed how that cuts from the top and not destroy the nap like that. I was kind of impressed about that. Let's see here, I'm gonna push this right back together, the same exact cut and see how it looks. Okay, so you see that? That goes right back together nicely. So, now the only dilemma with this is 
I'll show you. I'm gonna cut this piece and then I'll make another cut and cut this piece like I was actually going to make a head seam in a doorway or something like that, okay? So, watch this. I might be. Right there. Okay, so that one is pretty good. Then I'm going to come over here just like I was cutting another one. I can actually feel that running in a row. It's uh, not a row because rank rows that way. I can actually feel that getting a better bite and trying to stay in there better that way than I did on a on a regular long seam. I don't really understand that, but okay. So let's put these two together and see how that would do on a head seam. Again, I'm really impressed that it don't cut the fibers, the laying down direction of these pieces here. Okay, so. That goes together really well, okay? I really like the way that does that. But the only thing about this, so it's pretty much freehanding, okay? Because it don't really run in a row that way. So the only thing you have to make sure of, if you're doing a four foot head seam to make a fill piece or something like that, and you cut these two pieces here, say they're, uh, just long regular pieces so watch this I'll just show you with this straight edge here so this like this okay so it's up against and you can see the end of it run off that way okay and there's just little divots going in and out like that not a big deal and then you got this one here so again you're just at the mercy of how straight a person can cut okay so uh, if you're cutting these two pieces to put them together and they're deviating in and out because you don't have the most steady hand on the, on the planet there, the only way I know to keep these nice, so you got your room laying in there, um, you get one piece cut, yeah, not a problem, okay? Not a problem. We're going to say we've got this piece here cut, this is the hallway piece, we're fixing to cut our bedroom piece. Now, uh, we've got to get this cut to match right up with this. This is already pre-cut, now how do we get this cut to match dead up to that? The only the way I do that in a regular uh, straight edge of this is I will overlap my fresh cut, mark it on the back, and then go with it. I suppose uh, if you didn't tie anything off or anything like that and your room was completely free, um, you might be able to guesstimate this and get somewhat close and then shift your room around to make your seam line up perfect would be the only way I could see to do that. So I tried to do this. I thought, well, if I just lay my straight edge down on top of this and run my cutter up against the straight edge, I could assure me a nice straight cut and then I could have control over where my carpet was going to be cutting because I could lay my straight edge on it like that. The only thing about that is it don't allow your cutter to push your fibers out of the way, so it actually cuts your fibers whenever you do that. Yeah. So, it's about like it was, about like it was whenever I was trying to rope cut, you just get cut fibers all down through there. And uh, that's definitely, bleh, definitely not good on a head seam. You can actually get away with that more on a, on a long seam than you can an actual head seam, because head seams are, they're a little bit more finicky and meticulous and stuff like that about stuff showing up. So especially that much right there would be a bad spot in the seam for sure. There's a whole bunch of places down through here, but this one is the worst. So looky here. Well, that's just like somebody actually cut that. Uh, just with a straight knife. That would be horrible on a seam. The whole bit is not pushed out of the way. That's what I was finding. Look at a bunch more right there. That stuff just won't fly for a head seam. Okay, you flip it over and you straight edge it from the back. You only push your blade down hard enough on the back to cut, to cut the backing of the carpet. I will demonstrate that real, real quick for you to show how it should be. Hopefully I don't goof up like I did with the row cutter there. <laughs> oh, 
very rarely do carpet anymore, so I'm getting a little rusty. I'm going to have to start messing around with it more just out here in my shop. Okay. So this is what it should look like right here, only cutting through the back whenever you uh, do your straight edge seam there. Should not be any cut fibers on this at all, okay? So that looks good, looks good. Looks really good, looks good. So I don't see any, you can see where it started to get right there. That's just where it went into the backing. So this is what your head seams should look like whenever you cut them right there, okay? Should not have any cut fibers. This looks a whole lot better straight edge of that than it did using the butt buddy on a head seam. So, I don't know what else to show on that. I would like to, quite honestly, I would like to go ahead and make a couple more cuts with this right here on, uh, I want to try this again here, row cutting this, because it was actually starting to feel like it might be okay on the head seam. I mean, on the uh, long seam there. We're going to find out. It might have just had a little bit more learning curve than I was expecting. But I sure was not having any luck <coughs> with it cutting it all of them times right there. Yeah, it's still, I mean, it's still not done so hot. I mean, we still got, still got a bunch of cut fibers here. I'm gonna make a half a dozen cuts right here real fast, just to see. And then I'll just come through here and look at them just to give myself some more. Uh, you can definitely see dark light, dark light, dark light, but watch this, okay? I wanna show you guys this, just so that you know that's not a perfect cut just because you can see the dark light, dark light. So you see here, I'm definitely not gonna be in a row of that, okay? I got my straight edge really crooked. And you will see the same dark light, dark light, dark light pattern, okay? It's just the type of carpet it is. That don't mean that it's staying in a row just because you see it like that. That pattern is there no matter what, just because of the carpet. So look how crooked that is, it's about uh, three inches down to an inch right there. So now look, still got the dark light, dark light, dark light. Okay. So just because you're seeing that don't mean it's in the row whatsoever. So y'all don't confuse that with a nice row cut. Okay. I just wanted to point that out in case anybody said, oh, wow, you, it looks like you're following your row to me. Not the case. Okay. And that's the issue I was having a while ago. Just was not following the row. Now that's a row and you can definitely see. I'm gonna push it open three, two or three times there. You can definitely see the difference in thickness of that there and then up there, it's super wide. Michael says, what's the butt buddy run? I don't even know, I have to look it up. Uh, again, I just had somebody reach out to me and I want to know or ask me what I want to, and the man said he's not an affiliate with him at all. He just wanted to get a good professional review on it, so I took him up on the offer and said, sure, it's not my tool. I'm not doing this to make money or anything like that. I'm not money driven in this little demonstration or nothing. I'm simply just trying to give you guys a good review. I'm even sending this back to him. He sent a prepaid envelope, bubble envelope, to send it back, so. That's not too bad right there. Bobby says, evening from England, loving your work. All right, cool. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. And it's almost morning here. <laughs> About one o'clock, I guess. It ain't really morning, morning. Let's see here. Oh, that's a, that's going the wrong way. I'm gonna do it again. That one wasn't too bad. Again, I might just had to have a little bit more learning might have been a little more learning curve than I had planned on because it seems to be like it's getting a little bit better there. 
I guess now my biggest gripe is the blade not wanting to stand out there. Okay. It's definitely getting better. We are still are having, oh, wow. Had a whole bunch of cut fibers right there and maybe I spoke too soon on that. All of those just came off the edge when I rubbed it. I got a whole bunch more. It's just not staying in the row. I think it's just too big and heavy to have perfect control over. Even though it might feel like it's gliding right down the road, it just ain't done it. You got this little guy here which is super lightweight. You can feel it if it deviates in and out or not. Uh, but that one right there, you just put it down and go. I guess I'm gonna try to do it really soft-handed like I do this. I don't know if you guys, you guys probably know. If you guys roll cut your seams, you know what it means to hold it soft-handed where you can feel it do anything. A lot of times if you're roll cutting a seam, you can actually feel it if it jumps over a row or anything. A lot of the, a lot of the row finding and row cutting is, uh, is all in the feel. You can actually do it blind, completely blindfolded, because it's strictly feeling the process of it, okay? I've done that in tons of my videos about how to how to run a row and stuff like that. If you want me to, I'll leave a link up here in the corner of this video um, about row, row finding and row cutting. I'll leave a couple of uh, little cards up here in the corner. When I go back and edit this or whatever, uh, if you guys want to see videos about row finding and row cutting, just to let you guys know that it is strictly about the feel of it. So again, I'm gonna hold this really gentle, as gentle as possible. It's just, I think, too big to feel, to feel the, feel the rows. So that appears to look better. I'm gonna move these so we don't get them confused with any other loose ones that might fall off there. Okay, I, I don't think I've ever been right in the middle of a video and changing my mind, but I think I am now. This is actually not doing too bad on these head seams, on these uh, cross seams here. And uh, as far as the head seams, it actually makes a nice cut on the head seams. I can't complain about that. The only thing is about marking them and getting the cut where you want it to where you want it to cut. So I'm gonna do it again here. I might be completely persuaded by the end of this video. I kinda am definitely getting leaned, persuaded about it. The man in the video that makes these and sells them can stick it down there and, and go with it, which obviously he's had a ton of practice with it. And that might be just what it takes. There's a lot of practice because it looks like each time it's just getting a little better and a little better and a little better. So I'm getting to where I ain't got nothing to say about it. I'm just having to cut fiber here and there, just like I do with the row cutter. So. It might actually, it might be good. Let me do another one here. This is a, all my fill pieces I had set up for a video on fixing a film. And I chopped them all up, so I'll just cut me some more. Yeah, I want to give just the best review on this I can, my honest opinion, and see how it does. So I don't want to cut it short from my lack of experience with the tool. Well, I gotta say, I'm starting to be impressed. You got just a few cut ones there. Someone from Canada was asking where you live. Manchester, Tennessee. They're from Toronto. Do you up there in Canada with the Nina's Kicker Country, are you uh, 
You a fan of the needless kicker, buddy? Going to eventually do a video on that. I reached out to the manufacturer, the guy that makes them. Yeah. And he, he does. And he was out of stock on the manufacturer. I mean, he was out of stock on them. I sent him an email, told him when he got back in stock to, I wanted to get one to send me an email and let me know. I want to get one and do a video on it. I really would be curious about that. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm okay with it, man. I'm actually okay with it. This is a first of having a mind change right in the middle of doing something. I was completely persuaded the opposite direction when I started this video. You guys were probably seeing the uh, kind of negative out, out or feed about it when I started this video, but it's shaping up here. Yeah, okay, well, I can't complain about it. I cannot complain about it yet. We're still just tiny little things like this. The more I do, it seems like the better I'm getting. We've got a few here and a few there. Uh, now. The guy from Toronto said that was so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that is, ain't it? I'm, I'm, uh. I'm like that too. I, got, I can fit a couple more cuts on this. I'm about out of carpet here, except for my big piece I got over there. I have to buy all this stuff to do these videos, so I don't wanna, when I buy a piece of carpet, I try to get as many videos out of it as I can before it's completely chopped up and stuff there. Let's uh, get this again. I'm really starting to dig this. We could team up big money over here, Michael Dahl said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's getting better. Definitely it's getting better. I might be getting more control of it. It's looking pretty good, though, I'll say that. Let me get another one here. The more I do, the more, the better it's getting. I'm liking that for sure. Is the blade biased to one side? No, it's not. It has four cutting sides on it. It's a, it's a traditional carpet, carpet blade. I'll show you exactly what it is. I actually took one of these blades out. That's what it is. So right now I'm only using one part here. I could actually flip it over and use this part. Then I could flip it and use that part and flip it and use that part. So with this cutter, I could have four different sides to use on this. So one blade would last quite a while. And uh, these are the blades I use. They are by all means. I've done a video on those here a while back, uh, comparing a few different top brand blades. I already knew it, but those blades are definitely boss. They are the best on the market. They are sharper and they stay sharper longer. They just outperform any other leading brand blades on the market. They are the best. And as always, I will leave a link in the description for those as well. But I have got a ton of cuts. Ooh, I felt that, that went over right there. I've got a ton of cuts. This is where it went over. You can see that little bit of void on the backing right there. It's tight to the edge right here. There's the void. And that's back tight. Well, I don't know that I did. Right, right up there is when it straightened back out. So this bit right here is where it jumped a row. I felt it when it done it. So that's what I was talking about earlier. This is basically all in the fill, but I can't complain about it. I thought I could, 
My biggest gripe is about how the blade holds in there. It, it don't hold real well in there. It definitely needs to have something done about that. Maybe a, a small little lock washer in there, one that's maybe a little rigid or something like that. Just something to get a better bite on that blade. Once I've bowed up on it with these pliers and haven't touched it again, it's, uh, it's been holding up pretty good. Let me show you something here. I'm gonna pull this blade out. Again, I got a better tools. I got one of them Gorilla blades in there. While we're talking about them, I'm gonna show you something right here. I've made all these cuts. Look at that whole pile of cuts. All the cuts that has been made since I started this live stream. And uh, I wanna show you the abuse on that blade. It is slim to none. Every cut on here since we started this video. Look right there, I'm gonna set it down so I'm not. That's a little, if you'll hold it up just a touch. Okay. Thank you. See that? Reflection on it real good. Mm -hmm. So this is the sign I was using. Very little, very little abuse on that blade. And it's made a ton of cuts. This is a brand new edge here. This is the cut edge. You can hardly see any difference in that whatsoever. And just a little bit of scratching on it. And voila, that's it right there. Better tools, Gorilla Blades. No better blades than that, I guarantee it. Okay, well, I'm persuaded. I kind of like this. I didn't think I did. I, at first, I didn't think I did. Uh, was going to give it my thumb of approval, but I kind of like it. It's starting to feel pretty good, and most of all, it don't matter really how it feels, if it don't perform well, it don't matter how it feels, if it don't perform, it, it ain't no count. But it's it's actually performing. Uh, it does pretty daggum good, and again, on the head seams as well. So, I gotta give it a thumbs up myself. Definitely got persuaded the more I used it. I was, I was against it at first. <laughs> you guys, uh, I'll leave a bunch of links in my video to the gentleman doing this himself, to his videos and stuff like that. And I'm kind of believing now that because he makes it look so easy, it might actually be that easy. It just takes more practice, okay? You can see I got a mountain of pieces here that I've cut and it started looking really good there toward the end. And the head seams are turning out nice. Turning out nice from it. Might might be uh, some little trick about getting that cut right where you want to. I've only dealt with this a little bit, so I might I might keep playing with it and see, okay? But I'm I'm persuaded. I like it. We're gonna give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you guys don't have any questions or comments you want to put out, I'll uh, I'll call this video. Let me. Uh, Sit right there for a second. Thank you, Isaac. You guys all good, I guess, on questions or anything like that? Wow, I sure wasn't meaning to be on here for 45 minutes. Thank you guys for, for joining and for sitting here that long with me. Uh, thank you guys again. Until next time, FBSB's out.